Hello, thanks for watching WCCO. A man is in custody after a shooting at the Alina Clinic in Buffalo late this morning. This evening, people in that community are praying for their friends and neighbors who were injured. Calls of shots fired at the clinic came into the Wright County Sheriff's Office at 10:54 this morning. Five people were taken to the hospitals for injuries, and the clinic was evacuated. Police took the suspect into custody. Officials say that 67-year-old Gregory Yulrich acted alone. He lives in Buffalo. Police say they are very familiar with him, and there is a history of conflict. He is currently in the Wright County Jail. The shooting took place at the Atlanta Health Clinic, lo located just off of Highway 55. Buffalo is a city of about 16,000, about 40 minutes northwest of the Twin Cities. Officials also searched a nearby Super 8 hotel after a bomb threat. We have team coverage in Buffalo this evening. Let's start with Reg Chapman, who is at the scene of the shooting. Reg. Amelia, seven hours after the first shots of gunfire rang out, this is still an active scene. Take a look behind me. There is still a huge law enforcement presence here as agencies from the Twin Cities have joined in helping with this crime scene. We've seen everything from the Minneapolis bomb squad as well as canine officers here in an effort to determine what happened inside that clinic this morning that led to the shooting of five people. We did meet one father who says he missed being inside that building by about 30 minutes. Just took my daughter for a checkup, regular checkup, routine checkup. Um, we got there around 8.30, 9 o'clock-ish. Now, John T. says he and his daughter left, and not long after, he heard the sounds of sirens and helicopters in the area. Like many others in this area, they took... They heard the sounds and what sounded like they say an explosion. After that, they locked their doors and stayed in place. Shattered glass was scattered around the front of the clinic. One woman we spoke with said that she was cutting her client's hair when things started to unfold. I just heard a big boom and I said to my client, that was something big. It's too close to home. Too close. Trying to hold it together today. Now, all the agencies here on scene say they will stay here until they have secured the scene, until all the bomb squads have done a clean sweep of the area. The K-9 officers are still here, as well as members of the Buffalo Fire and Police Department. Now, sources close to this investigation do tell us that the gunman was taken into custody just minutes after the first 911 call was made for help. They say he did not shoot at officers and basically surrendered to them immediately. All right. Thank you, Reg. Four of the shooting victims were taken to North Memorial Hospital in Robbinsdale. The hospital reports that three people are in critical but stable condition. One of the patients was discharged. Another person was taken to Hennepin Health Care. There is no information on how that person is doing. Again, the shooting happened shortly before 11 this morning. And here is a police scanner audio of what law enforcement were talking about when they first arrived. At least 15 shots were fired. No further information at this time. Just somebody came and started shooting. Looking at at least five injured critically. The male said that the gun and a briefcase is in an office by the front desk. He still should be sprawled out on his stomach. We have a rolling shield in the parking lot approaching now. Is there any more mention about that possible explosive? 67-year-old Gregory Ulrich was taken into custody. Charges have not been filed. That man lived in Buffalo, and police have had contact with him for years. Our Jennifer Merrily is learning more about him. She joins us from his former neighborhood in Buffalo. Jen, what have you been able to find out? Well, police have been out here for hours. There are still cars here behind me and activity going on around his former mobile home. Now, this is an area where I'm told police would often come to talk to Greg Ulrich and neighbors who live around here said it was normal, kind of common to see police coming and knocking on his door. And many of those folks were some that were evacuated from their homes today as a precaution. Take a look. I'd like to show you some video from earlier today. Sheriff's deputies, ATF, and others surrounded the former home. It's just one of the places they searched today. We saw a canine go in, and people who live nearby were evacuated as a precaution today. Police tell us they've had on and off again contact with Ulrich since 2003, and we're told he was on their radar. A former neighbor calls Ulrich combative and said he liked to argue about almost anything. And he noticed a sign outside his home about two years ago that now has him questioning what was going on. He had a sign that was handwritten. Uh, it said Alina Crooks in, in letters big enough across the top that you could read from a car driving by. 
and Thompson told me he never asked Ulrich what that was all about. What we can tell you is we're told he moved out of this neighborhood in the last week, moved into a nearby motel. That's where we also saw police activity today. They were there for hours, including bomb technicians, and we are continuing to work to learn more about Ulrich's history, Frank. Yeah, uh, police did uh, tell us that, that uh, in the press conference we had a, a history of some kind of conflict with health care providers as well, so maybe that leads to the sign, Jen. I know you'll work on that for 10. Thank you very much. Uh, meanwhile, the city of Buffalo and its leaders are in pain tonight. And that pain was very visible on the face and voice of the city's police chief. David Schumann is with that story right now from Wright County Government Center. Hi there, David. Hi, Amelia. The words family and heartbreak were both used multiple times today and you could tell it wasn't just lip service from officials this is a smaller city a population of about 16,000 the mayor said this kind of thing doesn't happen here but several law enforcement agencies are now working together to make sure the community feels safe the hurt buffalo's police chief is feeling right now was also very apparent he was overcome and had to gather himself at the beginning of his comments the shooter uh, had, I'm sorry, that there were several people injured within the clinic. The mayor made a call to action today to be aware of and prioritize mental health, reach out to loved ones during this stressful time, make sure they're okay. All right, David, thank you. The Department of Public Safety briefed the governor about the situation in Buffalo. He then spoke with local leaders and law enforcement as they're grappling now with the aftermath. Our Caroline Cummings was there and with the governor, and she joins us with more on that. Caroline. Governor Tim Walz, during a previously scheduled news conference this afternoon, said within about an hour and a half of the shooting, he received a briefing from the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, and that was around 1230 this afternoon. He says he's getting real-time updates from the Department of Public Safety, and earlier today he communicated with the local mayor about those developments and thanked all of the partners for their response. At this point in time, we have a community traumatized. Um, we have families of the workers who are there unsure of what's happening. We know to get that information as, as quickly as possible. And again, I want to just extend uh, heartfelt prayers and thoughts to those folks and heartfelt thanks to the Buffalo Police Department and Wright County Sheriffs who responded um, from everything I'm hearing in this um, in an incredibly fast manner. An official close to Governor Walls tells me there are no plans right now from for further updates from Walls himself or his office. The governor is letting local officials and DPS take the lead on this, and he will get a formal briefing tonight from those law enforcement partners. Frank. Okay, Caroline, thank you. And do stay with WCCO on TV and CBSN Minnesota. We'll, of course, have the very latest for you on the shooting in Buffalo.